heart attack, fast fatal heart impact, past painful scars, in fact, I blast tasteful bars and pass, I back up my actions, fact, don't ask, grab reactions, jack, attack with every word, then act with class, as they hear me snap, I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise, now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce, I ain't lost, I'm finally loose, pick a new so for excuse, I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used, everybody wants a piece now, y'all can rest in peace now, you're dead to me, so peace out, remember you're discreet now, get ready for the as I stand here looking over at the planet, I wonder, why was I sent away? This place, it was made for people like me, mutants. We can use our gifts to either build or destroy. <laughs> it's almost funny in a way. Back home, people call me a freak, a monster. They called me anything. I always try to do good, but they always just turn their back on me. But here, here I'm viewed differently. They view me as a leader. They view me as something better. And it's not just me, it's also the big guy. Hello, hello everybody. This is Kiru Show here. And now, whenever we last left off with this series, Izuku Midoriya found out that the reality he calls home is gone. The Marvel Illuminati, they got together and used the Infinity Gauntlet, creating a world where humans and mutants were able to coexist peacefully for a period of time. However, that peace quickly came to an end, and the reality was broken whenever the Void and the Phoenix encountered one another, Midoriya murdering Jean Grey in the encounter. Now, we will pick up with Izuku, roughly a, well, unknown amount of time later, where he does feel like his body is floating, and he's confused. He doesn't remember anything very well. The last thing he can remember doesn't seem right. He was at home, wasn't he? Or at the mansion? No, no. He talked to Magneto. That's it, right? It has to be it. Now, Midoriya, he would actually open his eyes, slowly, confused by the aura of blue around him, and thinking for a minute, is he outside? Before he does try and take a breath of air, Roya feeling like he's choking, as he panics, throwing his fist outwards and shattering a tank of glass in front of him, as alarms begin to start blaring, and Midoriya, he does actually go to pull this mask off of his mouth along with getting a tube that was put down his throat. Now, Roy would pull this out, and begin to actually start regurgitating an unknown, an unknown substance, as he does bust free of his containment chambers, wondering what the hell just happened, as he does have a black suit covering his body, Wondering, why is he... Where am I? Now, this is whenever something would actually begin to start playing on the audio. As it does inform Izuku that he's very sorry. Hmm? Charles? Where are you? Hmm? Young man, you have become a danger to all of us. In fact, I believe that we should have done this a long time ago. You are being sent to a place where you can calm down. And, well, I'm sorry. You and him have a lot in common. So hopefully you can get along. Now, this is whenever Midori does actually find the Hulk who is currently looking around. As he does mean to start causing a little bit of carnage. 
him ripping free of his restraints as he's hearing what the Illuminati is saying to him. Now, the moment that he does bust free, he does wreck a few things and change the course of the ship as it's pulled into a black hole and ultimately does crash on Sakaar. Now, this does confuse Midoriya as he does go to stand back up and he's wondering about what happened to him. Now, Midoriya, he does begin to look around the wreckage as the Hulk does jump straight through the roof. And he does just wonder, where, no, what the fuck? Okay, was I at home? No, Midoriya does hear something as he does follow the noise, running over and seeing another pod of what he was in. Him looking in and seeing someone, as he would rip the door off and the liquid would flow out. As Rogue, she does go to pull the mask over her face and ask about what's happening. Hmm? I don't know. Listen, this is all strange. But are you going to reach his hand up to try and help her? As she does just somewhat push away. Her telling Midoriya to not do that. Hmm? Okay. What happened? I don't know. It's all fuzzy. You two? Yeah, where are we? We just crashed on some place, I don't know. It's weird for me too. Now. This would be whenever they do both go walking outside. And you do have the Hulk, who is currently fighting off a whole ton of forces of the enemy. As Midoriya, he does go to see Hulk. Him actually saying that he can help him. As he does go to fly in and try and smash into the enemy forces. Now, this is whenever Midoriya, him and the Hulk do begin to start doing some damage until the Hulk is hit with an obedience disc and is then ordered to take down this smaller species of whatever he is, to which the Hulk would actually try to fight against, until he does go going at Midoriya, and he does actually then smash into him. Midoriya and the Hulk begin a fight, as Midoriya is asked why he's doing this, until Midoriya is hit with an obedience disc as well. Now, Midoriya, he would actually fall onto his knees as he does go to bring his hand up to try and grab it. As the jumbling sounds that the, well, the aliens are making do actually begin to sound like English. Until Midoriya would look up and see the aliens. Asking, why are they doing this? Hmm? Oh, look at him. Very lively. You will be you will do well as a gladiator. Hmm? Gladiator? Where am I? Hmm? You were on the planet known as Sakar. Sakar? No. This is whenever an alien would actually come walking up. As they did capture Rogue. Talking about how this one seems strange as well. Hmm. The two must be of the same species. Very well. She does not look like very much of a fighter. Now, hearing that, Rogue would just say that they don't know her at all. To which, this is true. Roya saying that she's actually very dangerous. To which the man would look over at him. Saying, is that right? Hmm. You got that right. Looks can be deceiving. In fact, if you want to know what her powers are, then looking at Midoriya, as he does say that she can do anything, and that should terrify them, because once they get out of this, they're going to take them all down, and then head home. Now, the aliens would somewhat just laugh, as they order them to march to the city, 
now. Midoriya, he is surprised, as he does just ask Hulk if he does have an idea. Hmm. Hulk don't know. It's strange. Hmm. You got that right. But I just don't understand. What's going on here? Hulk don't know. Friends trick Hulk. Him then saying that they did that to you. Roya looking at him confused. As he does ask Rogue if she knows anything. Her saying no. As they are taken away. And thrown into the arena. Now. With that. This would be whenever Midoriya. He does actually try to wonder about everything. And try to think. What happened after Magneto? I'm asking Rogue if she remembers what day it is. Hmm? Her saying a date that would be roughly eight months after that day. What do I would remember? Hmm? What? What happened? Hmm? Wait. What are you talking about? The, the last thing I... That can't be... I... Charles. Roy is saying that name. Before, Madre would just link up with her telepathically. Saying that Charles is the one that did this to them. Hmm? How can you be too sure? Because he implanted memories in my head last time. And, sorry to tell you this, he's the only one who would be able to do this. He's done it before to me. Hmm? You really don't trust him, do you? Do you? You're here with us. No. But, well, you have to know this can't be it. Roya asking Rogue if she knows what happened, why his memory was wiped. No. But I can try and jog it. Her saying a few things. As they are getting geared up. And Midoriya, he does just try to recall anything. These events, these events, these events. Apparently Midoriya fought Hyperion in the Squadron Supreme. And he's also encountered the Juggernaut. Apparently that one did not end very well. Since it left a lot of people dead. And the Juggernaut was ultimately able to get away. And well... Yikes, things weren't going very well in the hero community either. Now, she does also then point out that there's this that happened to the mutants. To which, Murray, he does stop and drop the weapon he did have in his hand, turning to her as his eyes do widen. As she talks about 16 million dead, Murray does look at her, before he actually would go to bring his hands up, and grab R Rogue by her arms, asking her if she's being completely serious. Hmm? Let go of me. No, listen, that can't be right. It, it happened. Look at my memories if you don't believe me. Now, Ray would actually be going to do this, as his eyes would fill with tears, and he does drop to his knees. Now, this is what be whenever power does begin to start pouring from Midoriya's eyes. And Rogue, she does just bring her hand up, trying to use Midoriya's ability. Hmm? Wait. Her trying to focus. Wait. That's not right. Her looking down and asking if he feels any weaker. Hmm? <sighs> no. Why? Wait, I can't copy your powers. Hmm? Okay, and? I... I... I can't... 
her bring her hand out and going to grab Midoriya, as she would get him back onto his feet, saying that she can't believe it. He can't be harmed by her. Hmm? Whenever I touch somebody, I copy their abilities, but I also hurt them. I... I leech away their life force. I can't... Her actually hugging Midoriya. As Midoriya, he is confused. Her talking about how she hasn't been able to do this since she was a child. Uh, okay. Thanks for that. But what about somebody shouting for those two to quit whatever they're doing and to get in the arena? Now, Midoriya and Rogue do then go to the arena. Where, Midoriya? Him and the Warbound are all standing there. As they face off against dangerous opponents. And people do watch what everyone is capable of. Along with the Red King. The day he saw the Hulk was truly remarkable. It almost seemed too good to be true. And then there was these strange little creatures, similar to his own species in build and, well, similar differences. However, there's one that does have immense power. And he does wonder what this one is truly capable of. Now, this Red King has seen Midoriya use his powers. He's able to blast holes through multiple opponents, and uses immense strength to literally rip apart the creatures of Sakaar. Along with that, he never seems to tire, and he's even taken a direct blast from his back. Him falling into a puddle of lava, and then not only getting back up, but regenerating the damage almost instantaneously. Along with the strange changes he does go through physically, truly it's remarkable. Him wondering about everything. As he does have a new idea. Now, we do have the middle of the night. Where Midoriya and everybody, they've all become warbound. And... Midori is standing there with a weapon in his hands. As he does just look down at it, trying to tighten his grip more on it, as he does feel the metal begin to actually start squeezing together. And he would just let go. Hmm. Where then bring it up over his head and going to toss out a wall. As Rogue would just tell him that, and that does make this many points. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> you ever think we're going to get out of here? Mm, I don't know. Honestly, it's all strange. Now, Midori would then look at the Hulk, as he does ask if he thinks they're ever going to leave. Now, Midori's noticed a change in the Hulk. He's gotten larger. Along with that, he's actually speaking full sentences. Hmm, I don't know. Ah, best thing to do is to fight till we get to the top. Then after that, we leave. Simple as that. I can find a place where I can hold up and not be bothered. And you two can do whatever you want. Now. Somebody would actually point out that he's the green Sakaar, and that he can't just leave. Hmm? <laughs> you clearly don't know his history, Roy would say, as all the Warbound would go to look at him, as he does just talk about how the Hulk on their planet, nobody ever liked him, all people ever did was view them as destroyers. This Sakaar planet, if it, was anything, if it was anything like Earth, they'd be running and screaming at the very sight of them. They're literally monsters 
where they come from and call home. Even though they're, even though they're, well, the same as the native species. Just very small mutations. Now, everyone is confused. As Rogue, she would actually explain a bit better. On their planet, there's these things called mutants. And people are afraid of them. Because of the power they do possess. Somebody actually pointing out to Rogue that she can literally kill somebody just by touching them. Hmm. Her getting uneasy by that. And she does also state that she can also copy their powers. That's why she doesn't like to make long-term physical contact. Hmm. That's true. However, then there's him. Somebody looking at Midoriya. And saying that he seems to have the most versatile set here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I've barely begun to display my own powers. In fact, I myself am starting to have a bit of fun. I can actually knock things around here. Besides, I've never been able to cut, cut loose like this. Back home, it always looked like a tantrum. Here, though, it's justifiable. I'm having fun. More fun than whenever I killed the phoenix. Now, everybody is confused by that saying. As Rogue would just say, that it couldn't have been that much fun. Hmm? What are we going to stand up? As he does get directly in front of her. And say that he's never been able to show off his full power. And the only moment he did was back then. Ever since then, he's been worried. Asking her if she, if she knows what it's like to live in a world made of glass. Hmm? Kind of. I know something about it. Her bring her hand up. And people do actually make, well, an audible surprise whenever she does run her hand on Midoriya's face. And Midoriya shows no sign of pain. Hmm. Yeah. Well. You might be a freak. But you're a freak that we all know. You're a freak. No more. Rogue just looking at Midoriya. As does just tell her that when they get out of here, he can head back to home. And find out why they did this. Hmm. Maybe, maybe. But we could have some fun. Hmm? Midoriya just looking down at Rogue. As she does have a cheeky smile on her face. Saying that this planet, it does bring out the... Wildest in people, does it not? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe. What were you thinking? Hmm. I don't know. Destroy a few things. Take down some more bugs. Ah, <sighs> spend some time together. What do you think? Hmm. <laughs> ah, if I knew any better, I'd say you just like having me around. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. But what about you? I notice you've been si silent for some time. Hmm. Thinking. That's it. Now. Midoriya. He does actually then go to return to where he was sitting. And he does go to lean back against the wall. As he would close his eyes. So. Do you really like it here? Yes, I do. So, what about... No. Come on. Switch me places. I'll get rid of the disc. I said no. Why not? Because you'll kill everyone. Hmm. Maybe. But you know that it was fun. <laughs> I will admit, it was, yes. But still. We've been here for almost a month. Stop asking me. No, I won't. Besides, how about those memories? 
how they made you feel. Don't you want to feel angry? Rage is saying no out loud. As Edwardus turn to look at him. Rogue actually seeing that Midoriya he's, has sweat beating down his forehead. As he just turn to look at them all. Before he does, just turn translucent. And he does make himself blend in with the shadows. Now, everybody's quite alarmed, asking where he did go. As what he just does lean back against the wall and try to fall asleep. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. Have an amazing night. I'll catch you guys in the next part.